Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Sweet Pea Knits video podcast. My name is Peyton and this is a, as I said, video podcast all about my knitting and knitting adventures. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to the everyone who watched and liked and commented and subscribed from my last video. It got more attention than I thought it was going to, so that was kind of exciting. Um, yeah, and I just, I really appreciate it so I wanted to say thank you start off with that um let's jump into it first of all before I talk about any of my stuff over here I am gonna somebody commented on my last video and asked to see the mittens that my freshman year algebra teacher knitted and so I dug them out and these are them um yeah some green and gold baggers maybe possibly if you will um, I don't know. I mean, she made them and she knitted them in the round. I can tell from the inside. For some, I've always been confused about how she did like her decreases, and because that doesn't look like Kitchener stitch. Um, so I just kind of wonder, like, if I go like this, it's like two. Anyways. I've only made like two pairs of mittens in my career, um, so I don't really know how, um, I'm not well versed in knitting, 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 and I'm <laughs> not well versed in knitting mittens, um, but I have done it. So these are them, they're very, they're very nice, they're very warm. I don't know what they are, they're fiber because they're not, it's not like, I think it has some wool content because it's not like super scratchy, but a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't believe, I, that's all I know. That's all I got about these. So those are those. Okay, so let's start with, I'm not wearing any um, knitted things today, so we won't do what I'm wearing. But let's start with finished objects. I have two finished objects to show, so I'm very excited about that. I'll start with um, the one I finished least recently, and that is my Koyame. Um, let me find the front. I think this is the back. Here it is in all of its glory. It's beautiful, spectacular, splendid. I love it. Um, here are, here's the arm details. And the ribbing is um, like a cable stitch. And then the underarm detail, which I love, is just this line that goes into the ribbing, which is still also the cable stitch. Um, can you see the color change? Yeah, you can see it. It's a very, very subtle pink and blue. It's a beautiful, the, um, let me go grab the, I have some leftover yarn, so let me go grab them. Okay, so I have this left for the main. It's Ultra Wool DK from Bar Barocco. Um, I really liked working with it. I own, this is all I have, no, I have this and then like another one that is, um, it's a partial one. I don't know how much is left of it, so don't know what I'll do with that. Now this is where I'm really struggling. I would love some, why am I out of breath? <laughs> I would love some, I don't know if advice is the right word or some suggestions. Um, so this is the mohair, which was, I talked about it extensively in my last video. Um, okay, weird. Um, and it is Sorella yarn. Um, oh, that's a dog. In her mohair base, um, and this is the color I Smell Snow from her Gilmore Girls collection. My husband got me seven of these for Christmas. It's spectacular. I love it so much. Um, I love, it's perfect. Um, I have 
four full skeins left and then two partial ones because I, um, oh, oopsies. Um, because at some point in the body, I noticed some pooling with it, um, which I mean happens. Um, and then I wasn't gonna rip back and then I was like, I'm not gonna do that. So then I just started alternating skeins every other row. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it made. Anyways, so then I was using two. So I have four full and then two mostly full. Probably like three-fourths full for both of them. Um, maybe a little bit less. Maybe even half of each. So like five full, possibly. I was going to weigh them and figure out how many grams I have. Um, which one of these is 50 grams. 459 yards per 50 grams. And I have four, so that's... 50, 100, 150, at least 200 grams. I don't want to do the math right now on that yardage. <laughs> I'll put it in. I'll do the math and then I'll put it on the screen. Maybe I'll also put like about how much the other ones, the like partial ones are just to give some more details. Anyways, I'm struggling with what to do with it. The rest of it. I was... Hold on, let me grab my iPod. My iPod. Don't look at my pajama pants. Um, I'm gonna try and see what I have favorited for options on my Ravelry. I know one of them. Well, what's in my, I think I queued the Cumulus Blouse um, by Petite Knit, of course. Um, I was thinking about doing that because she has it as um, lace plus lace equals Aaron. Aaron, so pretty big gauge. And it's cute. I like the look of it, this one, you know? It's obviously, I mean, it has over 7,000 projects on Ravelry, so very popular option. And then I favorited some other ones. And then I was thinking, you know, it's like I could just do find like a different pattern that's like bulky weight and then just hold a bunch of the strands together like I don't need to look for specific like lace weight specific problem patterns um so I kind of was thinking about that oh this is the um, yeah okay so this is I favorited this um pat this cardigan the oversized seasons cardigan by Ozetta um, it is a worsted weight, all over textured raglan cardigan. It's very pretty. Um, and I really want to hold like more than one strand together because I think that would get a really pretty marbled effect. Um, I could also possibly get another, like I could maybe do a dopio sweater. Cause I know though that one you hold a lot of strings strings yarns together to get that gauge um but the thing is i would love to not buy any more yarn for using this like i love to just use this and not add to my stash oh possibly the sienna sweater by trust the mojo um it's really pretty but the thing is with this i just doesn't seem like totally my style does not seem like i don't know i just don't think it with that with the color I just don't see myself wearing it or reaching for it super often it doesn't I don't think it would have a place in my wardrobe unfortunately but it's really cute um and I think with my this is cool well now I just found another different um pattern by Trust the Mojo that is kind of pretty it's called the Darjeeling blouse I'll put up a thing um Thing is with that with blouses or t-shirts i don't want to make out a mohair because it sounds like a sweaty mess i'm a sweaty i'm a sweaty gal if i'm awake not even if i'm awake if i'm breathing i'm sweating basically um i run hot and then post having a baby it's like all sorts of things happen when you have a baby hormones are crazy hormones are crazy um now this is just a scroll <laughs> Ravelry video. 
Um, so here's the Dopeo sweater. I don't need to show you. I'll just, jeez. So it's fingering, fingering, fingering plus fingering plus lace is bulky. Okay, is that all I had favorited for that? Yeah, so those were all of the things that I kind of came up with. Um, you know, possibly maybe the Copenhagen cardigan by Petite Knit. You know, just hold a couple strands together. That's kind of maybe where I'm leaning. Or I just do the cumulus blouse because it's pretty in it. And I could, like if I run it, I don't need to make the sleeves. Like, in, that's if I run out of yarn, it's like a, it seems like a pretty easy thing. Like if that's not a full, like sweater size or length, I'm kind of okay with that. So I'd love some ideas and suggestions on that. Um, anyways, <laughs> back to the video. This is my FO, my finished object, the Koyame by Joanne Nitz. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. But yeah, maybe I'll add in some B-roll of me wearing this little modeling thing. Anyways, so that's that. Um, my husband, the love of my life, and I, we are doing, we're going on a little date night tomorrow. Um, and we're getting, one of our friends is watching our son. Um, so I think I'm going to wear this with like a black satin midi skirt. I think that sounds cute. Kind of show off. Show it off. I haven't gotten a chance to wear it. It's kind of getting a little warm, a little springy and... Yeah, I just haven't had a, an occasion to wear this since fin completing it. And I'm kind of like, it's so, I don't want to get any spit up on it or stuff like that, you know, I'm not having a baby. So I don't really want to wear it just around. Anyway, so suggestions on what to do with just one and a half of these. And like five, five or so of these. That'd be great. Okay, my next finished object, I'm so glad <laughs> it's a finished object and not a whip. Excuse me, because I was totally, I was working on it this past, past month, totally anticipating that it was gonna be a whip. I even had like a progress marker in there anyway. I'll, like, and then I had a progress marker in there and everything, and then I finished it. And it is this scarf, my husband's scarf that I made him to, um, for, for tailgating, for tailgating. Um, I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see the... Um, one end of, so on this end, I think I was about, one, two, three. I was like here-ish last time. And then I went, so, and I think, hold on, so if I was here, Yearish last time, then I probably yeah. And I think these four I knitted after learning about color dominance. All of this I was carrying the yarn, however it worked out. You know it. I did not care like it. You know so. Let's see if I can find like one that is like and put them next to each other. You know, like find two that are, yeah, like, I'll see how I can hold this up. Yeah, you can see the difference, how they look different. Um, well, obviously, like, one's upside down and one's, but, but um, that's because one of them I knew color dominance and the other one I didn't. Anyways, I was worried, I was blocking this and I was really worried that it was gonna be too short. And then I took it off the blocking mats, literally right before I sat down to film and did this. And it's a little short, but it's also kind of perfect. It's really warm and snuggly. And then he can do this and kind of bring it up and pretend he's in Dune play a little dress up. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is, if you don't know, go for your VEM colors. 
not Gryffindor. I did get that comments a couple times with my friends um, for like us for going to tailgates and stuff. I, when I was working on it, I was like, yeah, this is a piece of cake. This is so easy. It's just like, just a scarf. And now I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is kind of impressive. Kind of did a pretty good job. Like, I don't think I messed up on the color work anywhere. Other than in my overall amount of stitches that I casted on. Um, I'll show you. They, the pattern or like the chart that I used, I found on Pinterest. I don't know who the original creator is because you know how Pinterest is. Um, and it was a 10 stitch repeat and then two additional stitches. And then I was like, I'll cast it on in multiples of 12. I should have cast it on in multiples of 10 and then just two more after that. Because then it would have been seamless. Because I think I cast it on 96. I should have cast it on like 92, if that makes sense. 90 for like the repeat and then two more for the non-repeat. I think that's how it works. Anyways. This was knit using Universal Yarn Deluxe Worsted. It's 100% wool. It's, it's a little too scratchy for me. My husband does not care. The love of my life. So, pretty happy with that. It's finally done. I finished it and I felt like Frodo at the end of or like Return of the King and it's done. That's, that's what I felt like. Um, those are my finished objects. Time to move on to my whips. I have one, two, three, four. Well, and then, so I have four. Only one of them you saw I showcased last time. Um, but one of the ones that I showed last time, the red scarf with the moss stitch, I did not work on it at all. So I'm just not going to show you. But that is still... Sorry. That is still on my needles. Um, so I will start with what I did show you already, my progress on my Linnea shawl. I believe I've made some pretty good progress on this. Oh, oops. I don't remember where it was at last time I showed you. I should have put in a progress keeper. I didn't think about it. Um, it's still curling. Don't know how I would fix that other than blocking. And even then I'm a little nervous. So here's this. It is done in Goosey Fibers Gosling base, her in the colorway Druid. It's this pretty cool moody thing. Um, yeah, so it's curling at the bottom and it's curling like right here quite a bit. Um, so I'm just not sure. And I started, I started also alternating skeins on this, this way. I didn't, this was my last, the very first one that I used, I just kind of ran out of now. Um, I'm not going to try and get another row out of this. I'm just going to, um, attach my next one. Um, yeah, my next, um, ball. That's this, um, it's kind of, a, it's not a slug. It's like, it's definitely like just, it's just a commitment knit. You know, I just, I think it's gonna take me a while. I'm not a big fingering weight knitter. And this is fingering weight. Um, and since it's not like, I'm not like, this isn't my main project. I'm not like dedicating a ton of time to it. It's just gonna take me a while, which I'm kind of okay with. Don't really mind. I think it'll be really good for like cool, kind of like the chilly summer nights you know yeah so that's what I have about that um I think it'll be a bit of a labor of love as was the gopher scarf that was a testament to how much I love him so he better appreciate it I know he does um yeah I think that's all I have to say about this it's a fun pattern I really I like the the slip stitch details. I don't know if this was the best yarn choice for it. Um, maybe I should have done, well, no. I think in person you can see it pretty good. It's just a little tricky on camera. Up close you can see it just fine. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, maybe if I had a lighter and less variegated colorway it would be 
even better, but that's okay. I'm not really... I'm still excited to have the finished project. Oh, do you want to see... Uh... It looks really dark there. Yeah. So just a cool, kind of like moody, cool, co co cool colors. Just fun. Okay, my next one. I casted this on this summer, possibly. It's a pair of socks. Um, using some fingering yarn. Um, like Amble. I guess I can look it up on my Ravelry. Projects. Go down. Okay, they're the Sock Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel by Denise DeSantis. They are the Fiber Co. Amble in the colorways White Cat Bells and White Heather. Um, this is a new to me uh, heel technique. Yeah, I've never, I've never done, I've always done a slip stitch heel. I think. So this is a shadow wrap. It's kind of fun. I liked it. That's what I have to say about that. Um, I was originally going to do the heel also in the white and then I was like, eh, I won't. And then I did it, but I'll do the toe in the white. Mm -hmm. So I, I only have this one. It's definitely not what I'm working on a ton. I am only showing you because I did get to the heel and I have this progress I have this um stitch marker progress keeper just to know from measuring the foot before I start to do the the decreases and stuff um yeah this you can see the ply in this yarn a lot can you see that yeah and it's really, I feel like it's really bouncy. Maybe it's not as bouncy as I was thinking it was. Um, and it's, oh, that's not the tag. I don't have the tag in here with me. There's some nylon in there. I think it's mostly merino. That's all I have to say about it, about the yarn at the yarnery, my LYS local yarn store, so. Yeah, I did buy, I was trying, hold on, they fell on the floor, let me get them. I did get some shorties in size one, US one. I don't know if I, how I feel about them. I did the, the I did the heel in long circulars because that just made sense to me. I can't tell, I, at some point in the, cuff I switched from the long circulars doing magic loop to the shorties I don't know if you can see where I did where I made the switch I can't maybe right here I can't really tell where I switched them I don't know if you guys can but I can't so I don't care um I don't know if I loved working with these. I'll be honest. I had these in hibernation for a while because um, I was pregnant and so it, they made my fingers hurt. Um, just, you know, kind of some minor pregnancy carpal tunnel and kind of swelling a little bit. Not a ton, but a little bit, definitely was. Anyway, so those are, it was big from Michaels. Um, those are those socks. I'm also not a big sock knitter. I um have knit. That's my third pair of socks. So, and I bought the yarn with the intention of being like, I'll make myself a pair, I'll make my husband a pair, and then I'll make the baby socks. Well, I'll have matching socks. Maybe I still will. Maybe I won't. Who knows? I don't, you don't. Um. Okay, so my next whip is was kind of an impulse cut, cast on and by I had to buy the yarn for it um but it is 
an olive green sweater for my son because his name is Oliver. Um, and it's so little. I don't even know how he's this little. He's almost three months. Anyways, this is the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern. They have three different uh, weights for it. It's fine. It was kind of confusing sometimes, honestly. Um, like the raglan, it, it took me a little bit to figure out just the order of the increases. I feel like they ordered it a little bit weirdly. Maybe it was just me. It is a free pattern, so I can talk about it as much as I want. Um, I did think about getting rid of the garter strips in the sleeves and just doing straight stocking up, but then I was like, I'm doing, who cares? Um, but yeah, I'm almost done with the body. I just I think I need to do like two more rows and then do the ribbing. It looks really short though. Um, this one, I cast it on the worsted slash Aran weight pattern. Um, and I did not do a gauge swatch because I'm like, this is a baby setter. He'll grow out of it fast. Um, this is that I am using. Drops. Drops Merino you know, Extra Fine, which is like the the recommended needle size in the pattern is a US 8. And then on here it says a US 6. So, which I guess now I could count my gauge, but I'm not going to. Also, it's doing this weird thing. Can you see that? Like, there was like stripes almost. I looked it up, so this has happened before. I looked it up and apparently it has to do with the yarn. Some yarns just do that. There's no way to fix it. It's not like anything that I'm doing in my knitting. Can you see that? Yeah. So yeah, I built this colorway is the colorway 18. Um, on the website, it was called Apple Green. I believe it is discontinued. Um, so yeah, just a fun little quick thing. Just a baby sweater, they don't take very long. Um, I did buy three balls of this, I'm already onto the second one. Which I mean, this minus like three rows was all one ball, so it's a baby sweater. Um, so that's that one. My next whip, how much, what am I, just under half an hour. Am I talking really fast? I don't think so. I think I just don't have as much to say as I did last time. Okay, my next whip is, I'm not gonna take the yarn out of the bag. I'll take the project out of the bag, but not the yarn. It is a Tosta Tea by Rebecca Clow. Clow? No, Clow. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. It is this Cotton King's Cone 508 slash 4. Don't know what that means. Um, but it's a cone. Well, I bought two cones. Um, this one I just like caked the yarn off of. Um, I bought this from Hobby or yarn.com. I don't remember. Um, it's the colorway 17 on the website, I believe it was called cone, cornflower blue. Um, and it is on the cone, it's a fingering weight. So I'm holding it double, um, because the pattern is DK. She does have a modification, like she did release a pattern, like the same pattern, but like fingering weight. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I'm just holding it double, which in her sample, she was holding woolly knit cotton and she held it double so yeah so this is cotton i was like if i'm gonna knit a t-shirt i should it should be like a nice like either linen or like a linen cotton blend or just cotton or whatever um so i just went with cotton because i found those cones um yeah i'm pretty pleased with I don't think the stitches look all that bad for holding double and it being cotton because cotton does, it shows off mistakes, much like silk or linen. 
they're like silk linen and cotton are not very forgiving fibers like merino or like wool is you know so i'm pretty pleased with their looking pretty even i have quite a few inches to do on the body um in the pattern it says like 11 and a half inches from like the underarm i don't have a measuring tape by me tape measure which one is which um i can never remember um obviously i can make it however long i want when i tried this on most recently it was like just to here like just past my chest so i definitely wanted a little bit longer than that um I did do a gauge swatch of this, but I did not do it very, like, I didn't really care about it because I was like, it's cotton. I don't think it really, it's not like wool that really, like, stretches. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, and this, okay, and then this yarn is going to be in, which I could just use that as a segue now because those are all my whips. This is my last whip I was going to show you. Um, yeah. My husband and I are planning a trip to Italy in June, and so I kind of want to get this done, which I have no doubt I will do. Um, want to get this done before that so I can wear it, which again, I have no doubt that I will do. I wonder what knitting, I, what kind of projects I should bring. I probably only need to bring one. I'm only there for like a week, and we're gonna, it's not like we're going to... I don't think I'll have much time except for on, like during the travel, like on the plane and trains and stuff. I probably won't do it on the buses or like, I've heard the, cause we're going to the Amalfi Coast. I, they say that the roads are really windy and I get motion sickness pretty easily. So probably will not have it in me to knit on the buses. So yeah, so that's my toasted tea. i put that over there. Now let's move on to acquisitions. So I'll just segue straight into my thought with this one. I have one more, I have one more cone. Let me go grab it to show you like how big it is. It's this big. So this one has taken two, I took two large cakes off of it for the toasted tea to hold double. And then I have all of this left. <laughs> wow. Um, so my plan is to do a Weekender by Andrea Maui. Maori, Maori, is it with a W or is it a Andrea? Yeah, Andrea Maori. The Weekender Crew specifically, which is a DK weight um, pattern. I love the pockets. I like the the line down the middle um so my plan instead of holding just this double i think my lys just um started stocking oh my gosh i need to go look on their website to find it because which i held it there like at the store and it's very soft um let me find it though one minute. Jeez. Hold your horses. <laughs> it's not even that funny. Um, the Lucia by Holstegard. Um, they just started stocking Lucia by Holstegard, which is... I held it and it's super soft. It is 42% baby alpaca, 35% mulberry silk, 13% fine merino wool, and 10% yak. That just doesn't that sound he heavenly? So it's a mohair or less like slash lace weight. Um, I guess it itself is not a mohair because it's not mohair. It's not mohair, um, right? Because mohair, yeah. So. Um, I don't know what color I would do. Any of the blues 
So they got either Mermaid, Poseidon, Mistral, I probably won't do that one, or Pacific. Um, I will probably do, I bet I'll do Poseidon or Mermaid. Poseidon, Mermaid, just if you don't remember. What the, one more time. Poseidon, what if I do this? Poseidon and Mermaid. Poseidon and Mermaid. I'll probably hold one of the, those two with this. Um, kind of to almost like add another depth of color and like almost gray it out a little bit. So I'll probably get those and hold that with this to me gauge um, because since this is cotton and it's like a crew neck basically, I think that like just add a little extra warmth there. Um, it is, it retails at least at my um, LYS for $10, $10 um, for 25 grams and it's 219 yards per gram per 25 grams so what if i hold it with oh maybe that one maybe a green like what about eternity okay here's what we're gonna do so this is wait so here's the yarn mermaid eternity poseidon what do we think? Maybe give me some, give me, just give me some uh, suggestions. What do you guys think would um, be cute with this? Or if you say some other one, go crazy, hold an orange with it. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's that. Um, what else? And then I have, well, I have a little Taka yarn for the Harlow V-neck. I already talked about that last time to do the stripes. I am still planning on doing that. I just don't know when I'm going to it, cast it on because it is 100% alpaca or like mostly alpaca. Um, the yarn that I'm using for it. And it's becoming spring. So I'm kind of like, do I want to have that on my needles during the spring slash summer? I don't know. Usually I don't really care. Usually I will like, I don't care what like cut fiber content I'm working on during the summer. Um, I think I'm getting a little bit pickier about it just with um, knitting more than I used to. Yeah, um, so there's that I talked about. Oh, so the cloudy day sweater by Suvi Knits. I did, I talked about this last time and I wasn't sure about yarn i don't have any i bought some for it it is drops merino extra fine um in the colorway 52 i believe i did moss green instead of that green that i was talking about earlier which was like a sagey green i don't know i just this dark green was really calling to me also lately i have been like very I don't want to say obsessed and I don't want to say like invested, very entranced with color seasons, like my color seasons. Like, you know, like you're fall, you're winter, you're soft summer, so, you know, like you're, you're a true winter and then spring. There's a spring in there too. Um, so I, I looked through like different things that are like, oh, you have this hair color and this eye color, and this skillet color, you're probably this. And then I looked through a bunch of those and that helped me determine that I was either a warm spring, <laughs> a warm spring or a soft autumn. And then what I did was I took a selfie. I took a selfie in natural light not direct light but like natural sunny day you know just in front of the window um probably pretty similar to the lighting i have now um took a selfie and then kind of did like a color dropper on my neck my eyes and my hair and then i put, took those hex codes and i went to chat gpt and i said hello my skin tone is this into the hex code my eye color is this my and my hair color is this what color palette am I in terms of seasons? 
thank you or i said something like that and chat gpt told me that i was a soft autumn which i was surprised that it was one of the ones like it like specifically said soft autumn and so i was surprised about like that it knew that and that it was one of the ones that I was already thinking of. And then it told me like what color, and then I asked like what colors I should wear and what colors I should avoid um, and stuff like that. Um, so I might try and like start buying yarn specifically in those colors. Um, obviously I can wear whatever I want, but I'm also kind of like, well, if I look good, then I feel good, you know? And it says that I should avoid true blacks which I'm not like one of those people that's like black and maybe what color I only wear black. Um, I like color, but I do, I think black is nice. Yeah, it's probably not the best for me. They said also to avoid true whites, which yeah, that, I don't know, that makes sense to me. Anyways, so I've been really into that. <laughs> um, so, then I chose this color <laughs> and I bought 15 of these. Well, I mean, look at how little they are. So itty bitty, the littlest little guy. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna cast that on because this is 100% Merino. Cause I was like, every other sweater that I've made is not, is like, like wool wool. And I'm kind of sensitive to wool. Like one of them I made a uh, ranunculus um, in Woolly Knits British Wool and Santa's Garden tin silk, mo tin silk Mohair. I stole the color combo from Rebecca Clow with the Crea Bea because um, I thought it was really pretty and so I made a ranunculus with it. Here's a picture. Um, and I can only wear that with like a turtleneck underneath. And it's already wool and my hair, so it's and I'm already run hot again. If I'm breathing, I'm sweating. So, so then I, I just wanted something ultra soft that I know does not bug me. So I went with merino wool. Well, um, and I did make a. I do have some. I made a bundle in Ravelry out of my favorites with things that I do want to make in 2024. One of them being. The Cloudy Day Sweater, which I already talked about. The Weekender Crew, which I already talked about. The Harlow Sweater V-neck, which I talked about last time in the Apalka yarn. I'll do stripes, green and brown. The Koyame, which I did do, I'll, um, which I did finish. So that's awesome. And the Loom, Lume by um, Sorry Nordland. By Sorry Nordland. I think, I just really like this color work. I kind of think about maybe doing like it Christmas themed, doing it being like my Christmas sweater. I don't know. See, the thing is I want to knit it, but I don't know if I want to wear it. And that's kind of where I'm stuck with the loom, Lume. In my head, I say Lume. Um, Lumi, I think is what I say in my head. So that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I think it's really pretty, but I'm like, would I wear it? I don't know if I would. I don't know if it's like, up my alley or like you know what I mean anyway so then maybe if I do make it a Christmas sweater I won't feel bad about not wearing it more often because it'll be such a specific time to wear it that's what's up okay and okay so this doesn't I don't know if it actually counts as acquisitions sure it does um, so as I'm sure many of you know, ZZ Textiles just recently had her in stock sale and she had, I think it was 15% off. So I bought three skeins, 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 I'm still doing it. Um, I bought Cardinal and Classic DK. Um, I asked my husband if he liked any in the sale and had any, and he picked this one out. He said he wants a red hat does not quite match because this is maroon and that's what he would say it is um but a red hat are fun and it's a good red it's car a cardinal red which my grandma loves cardinals so 
So I'll probably, this is a DK, so I'll probably make um that one, one by one rib hat by uh, YOLO Pearl Soho. What is it called? The classic whip, ribbed hat is probably what I'll make with this. Um, Cause it's 231 grams, so. He does, I did make a muscle burr, muscle burr? In my head I say muscle burr hat, you know the one. Um, and I made one of those and he really likes it, so. But there's not quite enough of this to make one of those. And then for myself, I got, oh, and this is 100% superwash me, you know. And then I got Luster Blue, Lustre, L-U-S-T-R-E Blue. I was really looking for a nice denim blue for a hat for my eyeballs. Give me some brown contacts for real, for real. Um, and this is Alpaca DK. It's 100% non-superwash baby alpaca four ply with 246 yards. So again, not enough for, for a muscle burrow, but I'll make another classic ribbed hat. And then I bought one more um, in the colorway tapestry. This is natural worsted. Oh, it's so pretty. Wow, that's so pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. I only have one. Um, maybe another hat, like the soft and cushy hat by Pearl Soho. But I'm kind of like, how many hats do you need? You know what I mean? So I don't know, but that's what I got. So those are all of my things, that's this month. Maybe I will start increasing. I next Maybe my next episode will be not a month apart. I don't know. Right now I'm kind of like, I wanna clear my needles before I cast anything else on. Like I know I can finish the flax, the baby sweater pretty quickly, pretty soon. Um, I don't see myself finishing the Limia soon. I'll finish the Tosta pretty quick. Um, and then I'll have, then my, I'll only have like the red scarf, the shawl, and then the socks. So I should probably finish one of those. Um, I don't know which one it would be the soon. I kind of want to, like, I want to get the one that's closest to being done, done first. Probably... The, either the red scarf or the socks. But the thing is the socks, I only have one done. So then I have to do a whole nother one if I decide to like commit to those. And I'm using size US ones and I'm just like, oh, it takes forever. So I don't know. And I kind of feel weird not having a garment on my needles. And then I don't know which one I would want to cast on first, the Harlow V-neck to get rid of that alpaca. But then it's like alpaca, do I want to be knitting with alpaca with the weather being warmer, do I want to do the cloudy days or do I want to do the weekender? I probably won't do the weekender because I might be a little bit sick of working with this yarn um, because it's the same yarn as the Tolsta. So tell me what you think if I should do, which I won't, I probably, I won't cast it on for a while. I think I'm going to try and finish the red scarf before I cast on another garment. Well, I'm going to finish the baby sweater, the Tolsta, and then the red scarf. And then I will cast on another sweater. Tell me if you think it should be the Cloudy Days or the Harlow V. I'm curious. Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, my name is Peyton. Um, you can find me, obviously, here at the Sweet Pea Knit um, YouTube channel. My Ravelry is, I gotta look at it. Um, my Ravelry is this Sweet Pea Knit. And then my Instagram is Sweet Pea Knit. Um, yeah, I'd love if you, um, if you want to follow me there, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, um, if you, so, if you want me to keep making more, Give me uh, more videos, give me a like, maybe give me a comment. I really appreciate them. Makes my day. I'm um, seeing that. So yeah. And I will really re I will read every single comment. No doubt. Which I mean on my last video I got four, so it's not hard to do that. Um 
I'm not saying any more comments. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm gonna go now. Um, those are all of my things that I have to talk about. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.